guys, it's Triumph. I got this is a little tutorial for you guys today. This time it's going to be about Photoshop CCs. I'll probably do the shaker cup um, some other time. It's just that I want to, I'd rather teach the skills for it than teach just how to make it because I don't want everyone using shaker cups in the renders specifically, I guess. But, um, this was asked to do some Photoshop tutorials of what I do to at least my ads. And the good thing about 3D ads, if you're going for realism, I guess this isn't the best example. But um, you usually don't have to do a lot of um, Photoshop or you don't have to put a lot of CC to it because it usually will or should look good from the render. So I'll show you guys what I usually do. Um, from the beginning, so usually I'll just oh, let's see, keep current. So I usually duplicate it. I always add. I always go to filter gallery and glowing edges. Let me just scroll, scroll out a bit. So just broadens. But I guess just puts glowing edges like the name. Um, so edge width, I put one. Edge brightness for smoothness too. That's what I usually go with. Let's just click OK on that. So there we see it apply. So now we want to put this to I. Some people put overlay. Sometimes I put soft light though. Also, let's just do soft light. Uh, let's do overlay because I like how it makes everything darker in the lights more. So we want to turn that way down still. Let's go with five. So that's definitely a good thing to do if you're working with glowing parts. So then let's duplicate this again. Let's filter other and high pass. Some people say not to use high pass. I always do. I hope that doesn't make my hats look that bad so um it just I guess makes some lines more HD so I go with 2.1 because I don't want a lot let's click OK and again I either do soft light or overlay whichever one I feel looks better um, soft light overlay. I don't even see a difference so let's just go with soft light and since it does make um, things a bit more HD, kind of similar to what Sharpen does. I usually erase the parts I don't want sharpened if I were to do it. So I always erase the background and maybe the sides of whatever I'm working on for blending reasons. Okay, that's good. And then let's again turn this down. Let's just do 67. Merge those together. Okay, so let's work on some CC. So this right here looks like a calendar. It's color lookup. Um, my friend Eric actually showed me about this. So if we were to click it, it brings up this little window, and you see it creates something down here. But we have to choose the type of, I guess, CC we want to use on it. So on this top window or top drop down it's 3D LUT file. These ones come with Photoshop, which are all the ones I use. So if we're just to scroll down and start at the top, so see it adds like a gray blue tint. All of them just their own CCs. So it's just you guys can play around with that. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with this bottom one because it makes because the nice green glow on everything let's drag that down to 20 I, even if I don't notice it it's always a little bit there and what doesn't make it look bad works <laughs> so I usually even if it's sometimes at 1% there's always a little difference I feel so let's try some let's Tension green. There. Now shall we play with? 
Let's just throw some horror blue in there. What would this look on overlay? Yeah, might as well. That's basically what this is playing with what looks good. Um, might as well throw that in there. Okay, so there's a difference. Okay. So let's also just brighten up the label there in the center. Just because it is a little dark. Look what I do. Brighten you up. Let's put you on overlay. Lay down. Let's create another one that's brighten you up. Sorry if you hear my keyboard. Let's put this on lighten. Oh, good enough. Just a little demonstration. So now I'm gonna just, just duplicate the background. Yeah, I do not need that actually. So let's merge everything together. I always keep a backup just in case. Let's duplicate it. Let's merge all these together. So now we have a flat image. And then what I do is sometimes I go through the same things that we started with. So I sometimes go back to filter gallery. I don't think there's a need for that. Sometimes I go back to high pass if I want to. If I've added some textures in Photoshop and I want them to show up a bit more. Sometimes I will do some sharpen, but I think this looks fine right now. So let's add just a little bit background blur. So I go to Gaussian blur, go to three. There's really not a huge difference because I don't need a lot of blur. Because usually I add depth of field in Cinema 4D, which I guess that could be another tutorial, I guess. Just erase the parts I want HD and that would be in focus. I mainly just want the back back here. Blur. Let's just change this to uh, 90. Let's merge this together and let's add the last bits of CC slash final filters. So under filter, this is this is camera raw filter. So let's open that up. Okay, so it gives us a nice little window here of what we're working on. You can see what's in display. So the sides of what I was working with. So you can see what the, what the difference the CC made. So here we have temperature, temperature and tint. And these are the main ones I play with. The rest I mainly leave alone sometimes. I play with them. So I kind of want this to go more blue than yellow so like if I was to slowly drag yellow up you see it showing up more and more I want this to be more of a darker render so let's go towards blue and if you keep dragging that up you see it gets more blue let's go with minus nine on that and this is all this all depends on the render of what looks good don't really copy any of these settings I'm putting in and of course we want to go with more green because there's so much green in there like purple jerking it up slowly showing up same with green so let's, let's go with another negative nine so exposure just brightens up the things that are bright darkens up everything else so I kind of want it to be darker, so I'm going to go with negative 0.4. Contrast. Let's see what it does there. Let's just go with plus 2. Highlights. Kind of similar to contrast, but really only the light sources. Let's go with plus 3. Sure. I've never played with shadows before. Yeah, that's pretty cool.
plus eight. A lot of them are similar. <laughs> um, clarity. So this very much depends on the render. I think it does help with making things a higher quality if of like your render. Um, like this all I feel is already high quality. So if I was to drag it up, it would make the background that I blurred um, lose its blur, and you would and make it more defined which kind of was, loses the whole purpose of what I did in Photoshop. But it can look nice. Uh, let's go with, let's just leave it at zero. Don't want to play with that. Vibrance makes the colors more colory. The other way it makes the colors no longer really colors. And so I'm, I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with plus three, I guess. Saturation, we all, we all know. I get a similar thing again. Colors, more colors. Other way, no colors. So I'm like, just leave it at zero also. And so if we just click OK, the settings will be applied and we already see a difference. So on, off, on, off. So that's just a quick tutorial on what I do in Photoshop for little tweaks to my renders. Of course I add like, of course I add smoke and stuff as well using my pack. Did not feel like opening that up, but um, usually I add some particles, but not a lot. Um, all depends on what you guys are doing. Um, I probably would not recommend doing this for grunge renders as that's that requires some bigger CC. But I hope this helped you guys. See you guys in another tutorial.